I got myself a 7-ton horizontal double flywheel electric log splitter. What really sold me on it is uh, double flywheel design is engineered to split wood in two seconds flat. I use a Sunjo 10-ton manual log splitter to split wood. And it'll split all of this. And I've been working on this wood pile with that all winter. But I need something to go faster. I want to get all this wood pile completely split up and stacked properly. I'm trying to put this thing on my head. Okay, do you still see it? And see how difficult it is or not to undo this. I know that a lot of people like to use hydraulic, you know, gas powered log splitters. I can't handle gigantic, these gigantic log splitters. If you can handle that, fine. I can't haul it, it's too big for me, I can't handle it, nothing, nothing like that. I need things that are something I can handle. And I figure I can handle this. Well, look at this. Lid just comes off. They can't, okay, here's the, well, let's just get these out. Now we're flat tires, six by one and a half inches. Well, those tires certainly seem better than my, one thing about my manual log splitter, it has these small tires. I can drag it around though. I can, I've drug, drug it up here before. You can buy this power horse log splitter off of Amazon. But you have to pay $150 shipping. It's shipped by Northern Tools. It's free shipping if you have it shipped to a Northern Tools store, which is what I did. Well, look at this. Look how easy this comes off. Look at that. Let's get everything apart, out, out. Okay. Well, this shows us how it comes packaged. Here's more stuff. I did not even know about kinetic log splitters two years ago. I only knew about hydraulic or manual. That's all I knew. I saw enough good things about the Sunjo 10 ton manual log splitter that I got it and I have been pleased with it. And I will continue to use it. Especially on anything that this log splitter can't. Oh, I brought my toolbox, but look at this. It looks like they include tools for us, too. Hmm. Look at this. Hey, I don't even have these things. This comes in handy. Oh, look at this. Interesting tool. Boy. Look at that. Okay. This is how much needs to be assembled. Not doesn't look like a whole lot needs assembly. First step of assembly, according to the instructions, is to put this front thing on. There are the bolts there. Now they're already in here. I can't use their tools. What it is is a 10 millimeter socket. So I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and this um, wrench. And I just put the, the vice grip onto the head of, the, of that thing there. I vice grip it and then I tighten things up just by putting this 10 millimeter socket on and turning. That's the first step in doing this. And I don't have this uh, completely on its end. I just used some of the styrofoam to set it up so I could see what I was doing. The wheels. You put the wheels in with the, the longer end going into the wheel. One side of the wheel has a little bit longer and the short end that doesn't have longer is goes on the outside. Now they say there's a gasket. These are the gaskets 
they don't seem to fit. So this is what I figured out this tool is for. What you have to do is you put the gasket on that and then you squeeze this tool and it stretches this out. It stretches this out enough to go onto the axle, the wheel axle, for you to then put the wheel on. I can't do that one-handed, so. And of course, this is the, the cover for the wheel. Uh, the other thing is, for a second there, I thought, oh boy, they didn't send me parts. I'm going to have to call them. I am not driving back to El Paso to get this stuff because the instructions for putting the handle on say, you use a screw and a nut and all this stuff. Well, if the little monkey had just looked, they had the screw and the nut and everything already attached and you unattach it. That's the exact same way it was done for over here when I put the front thing on. See, the screws and nuts were already attached, but of course you have to disassemble them to then put the front thing on. This isn't hard at all. It's just uh, the things that are a little bit more difficult. If you're a man, I'm sure you have the physical strength to just put that gasket on the axle just fine. But And using this tool, you know, your hands can stretch it out just fine. Wheels are on. They say to put this on second as the second step. But no, you can't really do that until you get the wheels on. So your second step should be to put the wheels on. Now in here they talk about assembling the wheel frame and uh, attaching it to this, but it comes already attached. Before you think they didn't give you everything, remember that a lot of it is already on the spot where you're gonna need it when you start putting your handles together and stuff. So what this thing does, this comes through here and then that round thing goes on there but the little gasket to attach it, to force it to stay on, I dropped. And I cannot find it. I used a magnet. Since I can't find the little gizmo that goes underneath it, what I'm going to do is just get a rubber band or something. I have put this together. All that was left was to put the handle on and uh, put this on. I noticed the instructions say things like mess with the spring underneath here, but the spring was, well, you probably can't see it, but the spring was already attached. The instructions seem to assume that some things aren't put together when they are. Assembly wasn't bad. This is very dull. I'm going to sharpen that. Well, I think I'll be able to handle this. I, I don't trust myself being able to ha handle any machine bigger than this. I couldn't get it off the truck or or haul it around or pick heavy things up. I am not sh physically strong. This is the right size for me. And I sure hope it can tackle what I need it to tackle. Bye-bye.